autofocus performance, especially in terms of video autofocus performance, has come on a huge way in the last four years or so. Canon have been doing it for a long time with their dual pixel CMOS autofocus. And Sony have caught up recently as well with their latest cameras like the A7S Mark III and the FX6 and the FX9. And they all perform brilliantly in terms of the camera side of things. You know, once the camera knows what it's focusing on, they track it really reliably, really precisely and very accurately. But that's only one part of the picture. It's a very important part, sure, but it's only one part of the picture. As an operator, I also need to be able to tell the camera what to focus on. You know, to be a professional autofocus system, you can't just let the camera decide these things. You want to say, focus on this plant, focus on George's face, focus on that lady over there. You know, you need to be the one calling those shots and making those decisions. That's your job as a professional camera operator and using autofocus shouldn't change that. And so what controls the camera give you to change autofocus on the fly and change your mind in very short periods of time is hugely, hugely important. And Canon have been doing very well with it. You know, the touch screen on Cinema EOS, all of that sort of stuff is very, very good. However, with the R3, they've added some really important new additions here, which make the R3, without a doubt, the best camera I've ever used for how quick it is to change focus points. Now, the new tool on the block with the R3 is the eye control autofocus. And if you've been watching any of the launch coverage, I'm sure you already know all about this, but just in case, this is the technology where in the EVF, it's actually tracking your pupil as it moves about, and you can use this to change your focus points, which is brilliant. And it is really, really quick and actually quite reliable. Now, it's all about speed. It's not about accuracy. I do find it quite hard to, it's very easy to move the cursor to one side part of the frame, but it's very hard to target a specific thing. For that, the joystick is much better. However, for anything fast paced, this is such a quick way and by far the quickest way that I've found so far of controlling the autofocus in the R3. Any situations like wildlife or reportage where you may be doing something over this side of the frame and then all of a sudden something happens that you want to photograph over that side of the frame and you want to change, in that situation eye control is so quick and easy to do. Now I can't show you this eye control autofocus right now unfortunately and that's for a couple of reasons. The main one is the way that the camera handles external recorders. So I could I can attach an external recorder to this camera and I can record the output, but the camera's only got two modes for doing this. Either I can deactivate the, the screen and the EVF on the back and record the UI on the monitor, but that would mean no eye control autofocus because the EVF's deactivated and no touchscreen control because the screen's deactivated, but it would have my UIs on the monitor recorder for you all to see. So for the joystick and the AF on, on button, that's what I'll do or I can have those active and only have a clean feed on the monitor recorder, which would be well and good, but that would count as showing you footage from this camera, which I'm not allowed to do because this is a pre-production camera. We'll have to wait for the final production cameras to do that. So it's a bit of a frustrating situation. I really wish I could show you more about eye control autofocus. You know, I can't even record, put a camera right into the EVF to do it because my eye needs to be in the EVF to, for it to read my eye movements. So it's a very frustrating situation being able to use something and not show it to you all. But that's the situation we're in. I have found in using it two main drawbacks for me for eye control autofocus. The first is that you do have to be completely flush with the back of the camera. It does work reliably when you are, even with glasses on like I do now. I calibrated this without glasses on and I'm now wearing my glasses and it's doing a really good job of it. But the minute you're slightly off axis from the camera, maybe you're bending right down, maybe you're just not sitting quite flush with the camera, it stops working or it stops working anywhere near as reliably. So you do have to make sure you're positioned correctly behind the camera for it to be able to read your eye. The other big drawback I found is that it just doesn't work at all in video mode. Now, I don't know whether this is because the camera can't handle that, whether it doesn't have the right processing power to be able to do eye control and video at the same time, in which case that's a shame, but fair enough. Or whether it's just because Canon didn't feel like we needed eye control to focus in video because they saw it more as a stills thing. And I can see the logic of that argument, 
but I do think it would be really useful for some situations in video. I shoot video like this quite a lot and being able to just really quickly change between tracking that object over there and that object over there with just my eyeball would be absolutely brilliant to have. The second quickest way to control your autofocus with the R3 is definitely by using the touchscreen, especially when you're recording video. You know, this is nothing new to the R3. You know, every single camera that has had professional level autofocus pretty much lets you control the autofocus by touching the screen. You know, if you're used to the R5 or this um, Cinema EOS lineup, you'll, look, you'll feel right at home here. However, what is new with the R3 is that you can control your auto your object tracking with just a button at the front. And so no matter what mode you're in, you can always have access to object tracking, which is really nice because the R5 and the R6, you did have to be in a particular mode for that. So the next two options are the joystick and the AF on button. Now these ones I can show you because I can record this on the Ninja 5. And I've seen quite a lot of discussion about these online, you know, why they both exist, which way people prefer one way or the other. Um, really, I think it's great that the camera has both of them because I think they do have their place, each one. They've got different strengths and weaknesses, so I can see myself using each one in different situations. The joystick is definitely the more precise of the two. You know, you can move the joystick around very easily and relatively quickly, although it does take a little bit longer than most other options to get from one side of the frame to the other. But then if you want to get a more accurate um, positioning of this, like here on this flower, I can make tiny little adjustments very easily with the joystick. What I would say though, is that because you're physically moving something on the back of the camera and pushing it one way or the other, it can be easy to shake the camera, especially when you're operating handheld like I am here. One very nice touch with the joystick though is if you click it in, it resets back to the middle, which can really speed you up if you just go, I don't know where my joystick is anymore. If you click it into the middle, it's always gonna go back to the middle, which is really handy. With the AF on button, because you're not physically moving anything on the back of the camera, you're just sort of brushing your thumb over a button, it is much better for video in terms of not moving the camera at all. You can make, you're really not going to shake the camera doing this. And you can make reasonably precise adjustments if you've got practice using it, but it can be quite fiddly to get used to. It is, however, much, much quicker to move about the frame and with some good practice, you're gonna be able to very quickly change wherever you want to autofocus on from George up there, down to this flower, over to this flower bed. It's very, very quick and easy for me to change without shaking the camera at all. So I think both definitely have their pros and cons and I can absolutely see myself using one or the other depending on the situation. A subject like controlling your autofocus is a very difficult subject for me to get across in a video like this anyway, let alone when I can't show you half the things like I control autofocus or even the touch screen by recording the output properly. So this has been quite a difficult video for me to make. So hopefully you aren't all sitting at home thinking that this looks very similar to what you've seen on other cameras because yes, to an extent, that's right. We've seen things like touchscreen control and joysticks and even the AF on button on the 1DX Mark III before. However, there's something about the R3 in how easy it is to change between those that really makes this feel like something different. No matter what mode you're in, apart from not having eye control or to focus in video anyway, which I really wish that they would add, but pretty much no matter what mode you're in, no matter what focus point you've got selected or anything like that, you can use any of these modes, object tracking, face detect, the touch screen, the joystick, the AF on button, you can use any of them, whichever one is most convenient for you in the moment without having to pre-select anything or anything like that. The bottom line is, through using this over the last day or so, I've just always felt that I was able to communicate very quickly and very easy to the camera what I wanted the camera to do. And that, of course, is the most important thing. I think personally with the R3, Canon have absolutely got this control system right. I think they've done a brilliant job. But what do you think? Let me know down in the comment section down below. And if you want to pre-order one of these for yourself, of course, just head over to proev.co.uk with the link down in the description. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.